Being a private investigator means two things. You can be sure you'll run into trouble, and you can never be sure you'll get out of it. Not much you can do about it, I guess, except, like Julie always says... Walk softly, Peter Troy. And now, Peter Troy investigates Black-Eyed Susan Brown. Gentlemen prefer blondes, said some character, and started a rumor that'll probably go on till the end of time. And then some other character added, but they marry brunettes, which is about the silliest bit of club talk I've ever heard. You mean to say none of those blondes ever gets hatched? Uh, personally, I'm broad-minded. I don't marry brunettes, and I don't prefer blondes. All I ask of girls is that they be females and easy on the eye. Uh, Julie, my secretary, tells me this is not because I'm broad-minded so much as on account of I'm no gentleman in the first place. Uh, what brought this blonde bit to mind was my recalling a case that concerned a certain doll by the name of Susan Brown. She was beautiful, raven-haired, and had the blackest, most luminous eyes I'd ever seen. I found it hard to figure why any guy would want to run out on Susan. I warn you, Jerry, if you think you can run out on me... Run out? What are you talking about? You've got your money for your part of the job. That's all there is to it. Money? A miserable 500? You call that money? You must have got eight or 10,000 from that job, and I want my cut. Is that so? And just how much do you think your cut's worth, Susan, darling? Half. Oh, you're joking. 50-50, that's fair enough. Considering all the work I put in, finding out where old Hastings kept the cash, what day it would be in his office and everything, I could really ask for more. More? You're stark raving bonkers. 50-50, Jerry. Or else. or else what? Or else you'll be sorry. Yeah? And what'll you do, ducks? Go to the police, perhaps? Split on me, eh? I don't think so. You got 500 pounds you didn't have before, so you think yourself lucky. I'll tell off for now, Susan, my dear. Where are you going? Well, you'll never find me. And a little word of advice, Susan. Don't try looking. Or you'll be the one who'll be sorry. If I run into you down in any of the old familiar places, like I'm liable to get real nasty, see? Now, you just remember that, Susan. This is the last you and I'll ever see of each other. Well, Susan Brown, with the fascinating black eyes, came to my office that same day. Though at the time I didn't know it was the same day, because I had no idea she was mixed up with a creep like Jerry the Snip. As a matter of fact, this case was the first time I'd had anything to do with Jerry's. So much so that I didn't know his real name, which was Gerald Fortescue Pendennis, of all things. So I guess I was a real open-mouthed sucker when Susan wafted in and managed to persuade a reluctant Julie to show her into my office. This is Miss Susan Brown, Mr. Troy. She doesn't have an appointment, but I felt sure you'd want to see her. I wonder why. Uh, how do you do, Miss Brown? Uh, won't you sit down? You're quite wrong, you know. Mm hmm? I will sit down. Uh, oh, yeah, well, that's fine, fine. I expect you'll be taking notes as usual, Miss Summers. How right you are about that, Mr. Troy. Yeah. Mm hmm. <clears throat> now, um, how can I help you, Miss Brown? It's Mrs., really. Mrs. Pendennis. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. What? Uh, I'm sorry, Mrs. Pendennis, but I'm very busy just now. Oh, and, but it's uh, a very simple job, really. I do it myself, but I just hate making all those inquiries and wandering about Soho. You know how it is. A woman alone. Well, I've never been with a woman when she's alone, but I can guess what you mean. <laughs> Yeah, well, um, maybe you better tell me what it is you want me to do. Mr. Troy... Uh, relax, Miss Summers, relax. Just take notes. All I want you to do is find my husband. Oh. Yeah, well, maybe that's different. At least it all depends on how difficult he is to find. You should find him very easily. I have reason to believe he's hiding out in the underworld somewhere. In the... the underworld? We, you mean he's a crook? <laughs> well, no... It's just that he has some underworld contacts, you know. He's a caterer. And he supplied many of the clubs and restaurants owned by underworld characters. Yeah, but what's he doing hiding out among them? I expect he imagined it was the best way to get away from me. You see, we've been separated for quite a time now. And he owes me a lot of money. Alimony? I believe it's legally called maintenance. We're not divorced, you know. Oh, I'm sorry to hear... Well, well, I mean, it's, it's like this, Mrs. Pendennis. I don't usually handle cases of this kind. You know, matrimonial matters, all that stuff. Oh, but I assure you won't get involved in anything unpleasant like that. 
All I want you to do is find him for me. I can handle the rest. Yeah. Yes, I'm sure you can. Then you'll take the case. Please, Mr. Troy. Sure, Miss Brown. I'll take the case. Well, I hope I don't regret it. Sure, Miss Brown, I'll take the case. But I hope I don't regret it. Huh. You'll regret it, all right, Peter Troy. I'll see that you do. Oh, knock it off, will you, Julie? My feet are killing me already. I've been hoofing it around every informer and underworld contact I've got. Putting the lines out for that Pendennis guy. Oh. Oh, I am beat. It serves you right. Every time some woman comes in here and turns on an appealing look, you fall for it hook, line, and sinker. Julie, you're not jealous, are you? Jealous? Me? <laughs> oh, that's funny, that is. It is? Oh, well, in that case, I've got nothing to worry about, have I? Oh, listen to me, you... Yes? You what? Uh, what were you going to call me? Never mind, I've got to answer the phone. Peter Troy, private investigator. Mr. Troy's secretary speaking. Oh, such formality. Oh, yes, he's here. Just a moment. It's a man with a funny, squeaky voice. He says... Oh, that'll be squeaky. One of my stooges. I'll oh. take it. Yeah, thanks. Hello, squeaky. What's new? Yeah? You sure it's the guy I'm looking for? Okay, thanks, squeaky. I... W huh? What's that? Sure, sure. The dough will be in the mail tonight. You have the same address? Okay, okay, I'll be seeing you. That was squeaky. No, I'd never have guessed. Mm, and he's found this Pendennis character. He's holed up in a rooming house, 24 Gangley Street. Oh. Toss my shoes over, honey. I'm on the way. Oh, brother. You're climbing the Eiffel Tower. Now, let's see. Yeah. Who oh, is it? Telegram, mister. Telegram? Are you kidding? You don't even know my name. Oh, yes, I do. It's Pendennis. Gerald Fortescue Pendennis. What? Now, where'd you get that from? My name's Troy. I'm a private investigator. It's my business to know these things. Is that so? <laughs> private Eye, eh? Well, you've come to the wrong shop, Mr. Private Eye, because you know who I am. I'm Jerry the Snip, that's me. And right now I'm going to take a little snip out of you. With this. Oh, I'm sorry, Bubba, but I don't like boys who play with knives. Okay. Now drop it or I'll break your eye. Oh, hello, Troy. Come on in. Just the man I want to see him. Well, that's different. You usually want to throw me out in my ear, Inspector. Oh, not at all. Look, I want your help with a problem. You... Well, that's a switch. Now, you're an expert on card games, I know. I am? Oh, of course you are. Don't be coy with me, Troy. The money you've won from some of my constables. Oh, OK, OK. I'm the expert. So? No, I had a terrible row with my wife last night. She Look, said that... Slow down, Inspector. Cards, yes. On this, I admit to being an expert. Wives, well, I'd rather not argue about uh, that. Don't be an idiot. My wife and I were discussing the bridge game we'd been playing earlier. Oh, oh, I see. Yes. You see, she went to heart, and I called her out in spades. Uh, why'd you do that? Because I was long on spades, of course. Why else? And hearts? No, I um, had only a singleton in hearts. I couldn't hope to give her any support there. <sighs> then why didn't you let her know? Oh, how? By calling two clubs. By call... Yeah. You too, eh? That's what she said I should have done. Instead of which, you called her out into spades, and she didn't know what you were at. It's very confusing. Oh, well, I don't know. All these conventions of the game, you know, uh, supposing your partner doesn't know them anyway. Well, no conventions are universal, Inspector, but when you play so often with your own wife, you have plenty of time to arrange what signals you'll give each other. <sighs> with my wife, I'm afraid it's a matter of arranging what she wants me to do without even knowing what it is. <laughs> You're a professional detective. That shouldn't throw you... Yeah, but look, can we drop the bridge lesson while I find out about that Pendennis guy? Mm, Pendennis? Yeah, alias Jerry the Snip. He's in your jail, remember? The guy who tried to knife me. Oh, that one. Yeah, that one. What have you got on him? Now, that's a good question. 
Well, if you like it so much, why don't you answer it? Hmm? No, oh, yes, yes. Well, uh, you'll be interested to learn that you did us quite a favor running into Jerry the Snip. That's gratifying. You wanted him? Oh, yes, very much. For the Hastings safe robbery. Hastings, Hastings. And do I know that one? No, possibly not. It's new, only a week old. £8,600 stolen from a safe in a manufacturer's warehouse. And Jerry the Snip did the job, huh? Oh, it had all the earmarks of his work. No fingerprints, of course, and he pleads entirely innocent, but uh, the way such safe crackers work is as good as fingerprints for us. Yeah. Not much good in court, though, I guess. No, that's, uh, that's the problem. But we're holding him for the present. A little questioning might break him down. Above all, we want to get our hands on the money. <laughs> yeah, that figures. What was Jerry doing holed up here in London? Why didn't he blow? I imagine he thought it'd do best to lie low till things cooled off. They sometimes do that, you know. Yeah. I wonder where his wife fits into the picture. Wife? What are you talking about? His wife! A beautiful black-eyed brunette. Calls herself Susan Brown, which is presumably her maiden name. Perhaps it is. But she's certainly not Mrs. Jerry the Snip or Mrs. Pendennis either. No? No. He's not married, never has been, as far as we know. Uh, then Susan Brown is single. <laughs> Julie won't like that. Well, Miss Summers, well, what's she got to do with it? Oh, you'd be surprised, Inspector. You'd be very surprised. <laughs> On my way back to the office, I tried to figure the ins and outs of this rather mystifying case. Susan Brown comes to me, says she's Mrs. Gerald Pendennis, and wants me to locate her husband. But when I do, I find he's a creep named Jerry the Snip. And after he attacks me with a shiv, I hand him over to the police, who, it happens, are very grateful, since they want Jerry for a big safe robbery. Well, where, then, did Susan fit in? I told the inspector that I didn't think Julia would be very pleased to hear that Susan was probably single, since she wasn't married to Jerry at all. And whether I was right or not, I never really found out, because when I reached the office, I didn't need all the brains in the world to notice that Julie had other things on her mind. Well, hi there, honey. Say, I got some very strange Please news. Please look out. What? Just stay where you are, Troy. Don't move till I tell you to. Hey, what is this? I suppose you realize that gun's liable to go off, Miss Brown. It is Miss Brown, isn't it? Not Mrs. Pendennis. Quite correct, Troy. I see you have most of the story. On the contrary, I'm more in the dark than ever. Now, look, if you'll just put that thing away... Uh, take your pistol, too, please. Oh. Careful, Troy. Take it out slowly. Very slowly and carefully. I can assure you I know how to shoot. I don't doubt it. Yeah. yeah okay. There's my gun. Thank you. Well, now you have all the artillery around here. Do you mind telling me just Sit what... Sit down there, beside your charming secretary. Oh, Pete, I couldn't do anything to stop her. She just came in waving the gun at me and told me to sit here and shut up. Must have been hard on you, honey. The shutting up, I mean. Oh, this is no time for corny humor. It isn't? I can't think what else it's time for. This is about the craziest situation I've been in for a long time. Bushwhacked in my own office Never yet. mind the chit-chat. We don't have much time. Oh, I'm glad of that, Susan. This is a pretty hard chair you've given me. It's usually reserved for clients. What do you mean by handing Jerry over to the police? He tried to knife me. I engaged you to find him and bring him to me. Well, when the police are through with him, you can have him. But I figure that'll be a little time yet. Yes, thanks to your bungling. I engaged you, and I expect you to do what I engaged you for. Well, I usually deliver, Susan. But in this case, as the BBC would say, due to circumstances beyond our control... The circumstances had better not be beyond your control, Troy. How's that? Because if they stay that way, you're liable to lose a very pretty secretary. Pretty? You hear that, Julie? She paid you a compliment. I'd settle for her putting that gun away and no compliments. <laughs> you have good reason to be afraid of this gun, darling. Because it's liable to go off and kill you. What? Unless your boss does what he should have done. And what's that? Carried out your engagement. Y you mean deliver Jerry to you? Exactly. Oh, but for crying out loud, he's at police headquarters, guarded by more policemen than you'd meet in a tour of London. That's your problem. <laughs> oh, now, see here, Susan, a joke's a joke. You think I'm joking? All right. Just cross me up this time, and so help me, I'll kill that girl without giving it a thought. You don't fool me. Obviously, you're up to your ears in some crooked deal, but murder... 
Well, that'll be something new, even for you. Yes, that's quite true. I never have committed murder. But there's a first time for everything, they say. And just to show you how serious I am, the crooked deal you mentioned happens to involve something more than 8,000 pounds. Is that the ruling price on murder these days? Oh, Pete, don't joke about it. Who's joking? All right. It may not sound much to you, Troy, but I worked hard to get my hands on that money, much harder than Jerry did. He's going to tell me where it is, and you're going to bring him to me for just that purpose. The devil's all this, Troy. Who is this woman? Oh, this is Miss Susan Brown, Inspector. You remember? I mentioned to you that I was working on a case for her. Oh, yes, yes, I remember. It seems to me... And you know me, of course, Inspector, Mr. Troy's secretary. Oh, of course I remember you, Miss Summers. Uh-huh. I say, Troy, what's all this about? I'm a busy man. Uh, sure, sure, I know that. And the last thing we want to do is waste your time, but it's necessary. We, uh, oh, that is I. <sighs> well, well, the fact is, Inspector, um, about that prisoner, Jerry the Snip, you know? What about him? Oh, well, it's like this. Uh, I feel sure you got the wrong man, and I hope to prove it to you. Now, that should be very interesting, though. You go ahead and prove it, then. Well, I can't. Not right this minute. But if you'll release him in my custody... Release him? Oh, just for a few hours, Inspector. That's all. And I'll be able to prove to you that... Release Jerry the Snip in your custody? Well, look, we've been friends for a long time, Inspector, and... You owe me a few favors, you know. Since when? First I ever heard of it. Well, take your bridge game, for instance. My bridge game? What the devil has that to do with anything? Oh, now, Inspector, don't pretend that I didn't get you out of a spot with that terrible game you played with your wife. Oh, really, Troy, I can't see you. Oh, now, don't be embarrassed, Inspector. These ladies know how it is with a married man playing bridge with his wife. Do they indeed? Yeah, sure they do. Now, uh, you take that game we were talking about. You remember how I told you that you've got to follow your partner's lead, you know? Yes, yes, I know that, yes. Yeah, I hope so. Because you've always got to follow your partner's lead, no matter what. You get that? Um, yes, um, go on, try. Well, let me give you an illustration. Now, let's suppose that you and I are partners are playing against the two girls here, Julie and... Miss Brown. Mr. Troy, must we listen to this interminable discussion about bridge? After all... You are working for me, you know. Why, Miss Brown, obviously you don't realize what a fascinating game bridge is. And the inspector's very keen on his bridge, Miss Brown. (laughs) You know how it is. Oh, please hurry. Naturally, I don't want to offend Inspector, but Mr. Troy and I have some unfinished business. Of course. But you were saying, Troy? Well, um, you and I are playing against Julie and Miss Brown, see? Yeah, huh? Now, uh, you're smart, and when I lead, you're smart and you follow it. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, But say, when Julie finds she's in a spot because her partner's called spades and she doesn't have but one spade in her hand, and she forgets she should call two clubs and she gets shot down. What? Yes, sir, she gets shot down in flames because she's dumb and didn't follow the lead. Now, in your case... Oh, don't... don't worry about me. I got caught once, Troy, but never again. As you say... uh... One must follow one's partner's lead, mustn't one? (laughs) Sure, partner, that's the way it is. Well, I guess you've got the message now. I certainly have. Now, perhaps we'd better get back to business. Uh, What was it you wanted to see me about? Don't understand it. I just don't understand. Shut up, Jerry, and get in the car. And remember, this gun in my pocket is pointed right at you. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, well, I guess you won't be wanting Julie and me anymore, Miss Brown. You're so wrong, we'll... Troy. Uh, yeah. I need you and your secretary very much. Do you think I'm going to let you both go before I get my hands on that money? Oh, it was worth a try, Pete. Yeah. Get in the car, both of you. Troy, you drive. Why did they let me go? That's what I can't understand. Get going, Troy. Don't let you go that easy. (laughs) Troy is a very persuasive man, Jerry. He's a good friend of the inspectors. He must be. I really thought they had me this time. You can thank me for being free again, Jerry, dear. Eh? And you can show how grateful you are and how sorry you are that you ran out on me 
By taking us to where you have that money hidden. Oh, you may think you're smart, Susan, but you're not that smart. You can't make me talk. Can't I? No. Well, perhaps not. But if I'm not going to have any of that 8,000, then I can tell you for sure that you're not either. I just as soon shoot you and let it go at that. I have to. Ah, come off it. You're no killer. As I told Troy, there has to be a first time for everything. And I wouldn't mind starting with you. You better do what she says, Jerry. She was willing to gun down Julie here if I didn't get you away from the police. And you believe she'd go through with it? I sure did. As she said, it's the first time for everything. Well, I... Hell hath no fury like a woman double-crossed, Jerry. If I were you, I'd play ball. And I'm thinking of my own neck, too, you know. Very sensible of you, Troy. But you, Jerry, will be the first to go. I promise you. Okay, okay, you win. Well, I suppose half the cash is better than none at all. You, you, you turn right at this next intersection, Troy. Well, here we are. This is where I hid it. In this broken-down old warehouse. Well, where could you find a safe place here? Well, nobody comes in here no more except tramps. They wouldn't be looking for no money. Come on, it's over here. Yeah, there's a there's a loose board in this partition here. Yeah, here it is. This is the one. Ooh, here we are. Lovely, ain't it? Please. Oh, is it all there? Yeah, of course it's all there. Good. Hand it over. All of us. What? Half is what you said. That was before you tried to double-cross me. Now I want all of it. Uh, Miss Brown, perhaps we can save you two having an argument about it. What? Pete, look who's here. Inspector Caswell. Hey, the cops. Cops is right. At least 20 of them. All right, Troy. You miserable double-crossing. Troy, I'll kill you for this. That would be very silly, don't you think, Miss Brown? Why add murder to everything else now? Whatever happens, you've lost, you know. I don't get it. How? We simply followed you. Very discreetly, of course. My men are very good at that. There's all that nonsense about a bridge game, of course. Troy talking about my following his lead and so on. Oh, I knew it. I knew there was something fishy about them letting me go free like that. Oh, I sure am glad you play bridge, Inspector. And even then, I wasn't sure you'd got the message. You're a fool, Troy. If you'd played along with me, you could have had half the money yourself. Oh, is that all? Only the money, Susan? Uh, just a moment. That's a touchy subject. And if I were you, I... I know, I know. Walk softly, softly Peter, Peter Troy. Troy. Happily, as it happened, Julie was so pleased to see the last of black-eyed Susan Brown that she never did get around to getting sore about my being interested in the girl. As I told Julie, she should never doubt my high rating of her. Look at the price I'm having to pay for saving her life. This was now Transit Production, written by Cresic Jenkinson and directed by Jim Bradley. <laughs> <laughs> 